there's that thing of over processing, right? Like you have to like, I do find that that's something that you're wary of in the, in the mastering seat of like not overdoing it. The very hardest thing for the younger engineers to get a grasp, grasp on is when to stop. It went, you know, cause, because mm. mastering is this little extra enhancement, brightness, loudness thing, you know, thing. And, it, and almost every time a new person touches it, they can make it a little bit seem a little bit more intense, a little bit more vibrant, a little bit brighter, and it, and your your brain immediately tells you, "Oh, that's be- that's better." But when have you gone too far? Is a much more a um, senior, <laughs> um, a, I don't mean a, a, a aged person. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> a it's a senior skill in that you have to have been there a whole bunch of times prior to recognize that you're not serving the song anymore. That you're that you've you've got your tools out and you're solving problems, but you're not serving the song. Right, and that's hard to recognize. Um, uh, but, but when pointed out almost every, when, when I do point that out with a, a younger engineer, they go like, you know, and I, I take out, you know, t- two or three bands of the EQ that they're doing. They'll tell me why they're doing this and why they're doing that. I'm well, cause the vocal is not quite bright enough. And, and then, but the guitars are a little bit harsh and I'm doing this and that and the other thing to, mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, take this thing out. And, and then, you know, is that really better with that in, or is it almost better with it out? And sometimes less really is more but you got to you got to make yourself listen to it uh, 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 objectively uh, well, i guess it, yeah you really have to check your work and and make sure that you're really not just believing that you're drinking your own Kool-Aid <laughs> at times yeah yeah i i I, th- I think that's like that's that's sometimes it's just about bypassing you know it's just like oh did this really do what i was hoping for it to do and cuz you you go you know, sometimes you bypass like two of the plugins that you put in for me because I'm in the box, but I don't, I don't even master, but you, you know what I'm saying? And then sure. it's like, okay, you know, all right, there it is. Well, Went too you, far. you, you mentally invest a quite a lot to, to, to do something. It's like, oh, I, this song needs to be brighter. I, I, for me, more technically, like I've got a, I've got, a, I can hear this kind of cloudy hump around, you know, 150, 200 hertz. So I want to deal with that. So you deal with that and you go like, well, now the bass isn't quite so. And so I deal with that. And now the, I'm, the vocal's kind of thin. So I do something else. And it's, it, they're, they're not mutually exclusive things, even though the controls on the box you know, make you think that they're mutually exclusive. There's additive effects of all of those things in. And one of the one of the other things that uh, takes a little while for um, mixers to get used to when they move over to mastering is how little EQ and little compression you need to make a, a dramatic difference. Mm-hmm. They're kind of so used to throw it on three, four, six, eight, ten dB of EQ. Their their like mastering version is like plus three and plus you know minus two and plus three and plus four. I mean those those that range of the controls on my on my EQs they don't even get exercised you know out past <laughs> plus one. I, I mean I don't I can't tell you the last time I've been pa- above plus two really on anything on my console. That's so amazing. So that tells you, that, and that's not because the mixes come in so amazing sounding. It's because the character of that EQ starts to get outside of its window of br- of, of brilliance for me, of where wow. it, it starts. And so I'm going to look for another solution if I'm if I'm really having to do that. Turns out a couple, uh, you know, the um, the Weiss um, digital EQ is really good at doing more larger scale things. It just it just holds the music together better for for me for some reason. Um, and so I, I, it's kind of, I, I'll use that or maybe a very, very select um, in the box EQ to do a, the, the, like the heavy lifting of a, of a pre EQ. But I'll try wherever possible to keep those as broad strokes, um, mm. just influencing the mix in a general sense and then using the analog tools to, um, to kind of refine that. But it doesn't take a lot of numbers of EQ. Um, uh, and again, you have to you have to listen before and afters really carefully. Your your ear kind of gets used to the EQ. So you know, plus two, plus one and a half sounds good. Well, let's try plus two. Well, that sounds pretty good. Plus three. Oh, that sounds pretty good. So then you stay at plus three. But in fact, you know, really, you were you kind of were where you needed to be at, at uh, in the lower numbers. I would just challenge people to mm. to try less and and see how it tastes. It's kind of like 
spices in cooking. You know, you probably can use less. You don't have to taste the oregano. You really don't. It's it's in there. It's influencing the soup. You don't have to taste it. 